What seems to be a typical start of the school day procedure isn't typical at all in the Twin River School District in North Sacramento. Just listen. That's the sound of an electric bus that rides so quietly, those three tones were added so people nearby would know a very large vehicle was approaching. I drove this in San Francisco. And driving through San Francisco, people were very distracted. And I had a couple people almost walk right out in front of me, but the reason they didn't is because they heard that sound. And they looked up like, what was that? <laughs> Twin Rivers is the 27th largest school district in the state, but thanks to generous grants from energy commissions and air pollution control agencies, the district is on pace to have more than 40 electric buses in its fleet. That's more than any other district in the country. So by the year 2021, we should be um, diesel free, 100% alternative fuel. It's clean air for kids and clean air for the communities. Electric buses are quieter because they're not burning diesel for energy. If you don't remember that old-fashioned school bus sound, here it is. Running on electricity also means the bus isn't creating exhaust to be breathed in by students, drivers, and mechanics. There are carcinogens in, in diesel exhaust. Uh, the impact on uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, it, it makes sense from just, you know, personal health and the health of the planet. Nate Baggio is vice president of sales for Lion Electric, the leading manufacturer of electric buses. Lion has opened a bus experience center in Sacramento so other school districts can drop in to learn how they work and to determine if they're worth the investment. Up front, electric buses cost two and a half times a traditional diesel bus, but Lion Electric and Twin Rivers say these vehicles eventually pencil out. When you look at 80% less maintenance, 72% less uh, in fuel costs, uh, there's an economic argument. Maintenance costs are, are tremendous on older buses and breakdowns and kids getting to school late. So with the electric bus, we're, with the grant money, we're paying about $55,000 a bus. So that's how we can justify it. The return on investment is huge. The buses are charged when not in use. A bright panel reminds the driver how much battery power and how many miles remain before needing another charge. The range for these buses is 100 miles. Driver Paul Harrison was on board with the new buses pretty quickly. I was kind of a skeptic in the beginning. And once I got behind the wheel and started driving a bus, I say, wow, this is really, really nice. Kids say they enjoy the quieter ride. It's very comfortable, and we play music on the bus sometimes, and it gets very exciting. And it turns out those three tones are pretty memorable. Da -na -na. Me and my granny and my mom says that it sounds like Christmas music. Now you'd think drivers especially would be sick of those tones that ring when the bus is traveling below 15 miles per hour. Nancy, our guide this day, surprised us. Her ringtone shows just how excited she Hello. is driving a bus that's saving energy and cutting emissions. The school bus industry has not done anything to innovate or change in the last 25 years. And here we get to innovate a little bit, and that's exciting, and I enjoy it. I am absolutely thrilled to be a part of it. School buses are increasingly going high tech across the nation. One app allows parents to use GPS to track their child's school bus in real time, notifying them when it's nearby. In some districts, students swipe card readers when they board the bus, allowing the district and parents to track their location at all times. And more than a dozen states have passed laws to allow exterior cameras on buses, in part to catch drivers who illegally pass school buses that have stopped. 